guys, welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. Well, I took a lot of your advice and I did some, uh, you know, a little soul searching here and I decided I am going to pick up another JDM motor. So I'm headed to Tier 1 Imports uh, where I bought my first motor, or the last one rather, that exploded in a spectacular fashion. And we're going to grab, it's 900 bucks, two hour drive each way. Um, and we're just gonna bite the bullet and go that route. Now, I just wanna explain to you guys what happened. I got, you know, a little too Johnny Hot Rod and I lost, uh, I lost focus on what I was trying to achieve with this swap to begin with. So just to refresh you guys' memory, my whole plan was to build a swap kit for 996 and 997 platforms. Now, I lost, focus of that a little bit. I got a little too crazy. I started focusing on big power and blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, it came and bit me in the ass. So my plan moving forward, just to share with you guys, is to buy another stock motor and keep it all stock with the exception of the turbo. Now, for now, I'm going to leave the turbo I have on it on it because I actually just applied to become a Pulsar uh, turbocharger dealer. And I'm hoping to uh, get that finalized with them in the next couple of weeks or so and get uh, one of their 6262 G series turbos on that motor, which will be a much, much better turbo. Um, but for the time being, I'm just gonna leave the 10 PSI gate pressure that we originally were driving around at when we went to the dyno, made 325 horsepower, car felt fine, everything was great. And um, you know, just work out the bugs from there. So there's no point in trying to throw a built block in this when I still have a lot more, um, a lot more things to do on that car to get it into a position where I feel comfortable selling swap kits. Uh, with that being said, the oiling system is one of them that I want to readdress and reevaluate. Um, I did originally have a baffled uh, K24 Z3 oil pan, baffled, chambered, and all this stuff I did to it. But for a swap kit, it would be honestly a little too complicated and it's kind of a, really was a pain to build. And I don't think it was the best uh, avenue to go for customers' cars. Um, I think I can do a just as effective baffle setup on a steel pan, for example, that will work really well. So I'm gonna play around with some baffling uh, ideas moving forward uh, but like i said right for now we're just gonna keep it all stock get it back running get everything working again and you know just start from scratch really so that's that's kind of the plan but yeah so um and once everything's stock we're just gonna build our way up from there and make sure we don't run into any issues along the way and then as far as the built motor is concerned i mean that's sitting there i did send uh, strip a K24 A2 head sent to the machine shop. So I will slowly progressively build that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even gonna put it in this car, but if I do, then um, then that will be ready to go when the time comes. But like I said, for now, we're just going to uh, throw another JDM motor in there. Uh, and then once we get the new turbo in and all that stuff, then we can start playing around with it a little bit and maybe squeeze another 50 horsepower or something out of it. You know, just keep it 350, 400, nothing crazy. Reevaluate our boost controller situation. I had a four port on there, which was just too difficult to control. Um, so I'm gonna switch to, I'm not sure if I need two three ports because I have twin wastegates, but um, we're gonna go to a three port Mac valve, which should solve the uh, boost issues. You know, Luke was complaining about the four port and I wish at the time we just would have scrapped the whole idea and just said, hey, let's come back another day once we get this boost under control because it was just going nuts. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to uh, take a little more liberties and just be a little more proactive about um, just safeties and things like that in the tune. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn the boost cut to like 14 PSI. And there's, you know, I just haven't been, I don't know why, I've just been a little bit nervous, I guess, or just apprehensive to take control of the situation, but I think it's, uh, you know, I'm not a dummy. I mean, I think I can figure things out and, you know, I'm gonna put all sorts of safeties on there and I'll figure out how to do that. You know, I'll put a oil pressure safety, I'll put a fuel pressure safety, I'll put a boost cut safety, 
I'll put all sorts of stuff, you know what I mean? And that way, we know we can keep that engine protected. I mean, with that hull tech, we can do pretty much anything. So you can't have too many safeties, in my opinion. So I'm gonna put a safety on everything, and I'm going to just be, like I said, be a little more proactive with the tune, and uh, see if I can um, get that uh, get that a little more dialed in and squared away. All right, guys, we are back here at tier one. The pile's a little less this time today, but we got these three, I think four here. I'm gonna pop a valve cover on the cleanest looking one and go from there. Let's check them out. Okay, so this one does not actually look as clean as our last one. Right, guys this one looks super clean this looks super clean guys this is the one so i'm just gonna put the valve cover back on have them pick it out make sure everything's there and uh go from there you've been busy man there's a lot more motors here last time oh so you had a shipment even after that oh wow you can come in more. All right, guys, that does it. Check out JDM Tier 1 engines. He's always got a crazy amount of all sorts of JDM engines and JDM parts, fenders, front clips, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, he's been flying through uh, motors, so good guy over here. So go to Tier 1, talk to Fred. He'll get you, uh, get you all hooked up. Well, here we are back with a very familiar scene. So this motor looks just like the other one did. Um, a little bit dirtier on the outside, but whatever. It's really inside that counts, right? So I got, uh, I got some other jobs I gotta work on, but I'm gonna work on getting this sucker stripped down, cleaned up a little bit, and then tossed back into the car as soon as possible. I wanna be driving this thing uh, sooner and later for sure. We have our motor here all stripped down, except with the exception of the water pump housing. We're gonna leave that on because I'm going to just kind of super clean and just clean this up, even though it's a very clean motor uh, for the most part. We're just gonna give it a little degreasing before we start swapping the accessories over. So that's something I'm just gonna pick away at. But in the meantime, um, I just want to kind of get back to reality here and focus on what the whole purpose of this was to begin with. My whole purpose was to build a K-swap kit for 996 slash 997 chassis. So with that being said, I kind of lost sight of what I was trying to accomplish. And I got more into the what I normally like to do. Hey, we got a motor here. Let's push it as hard as possible and see what happens. Well. As you guys have seen, first motor, pretty sure that was hurt from the beginning, spun a rod bearing. Okay, bad luck. Second motor, 28 pounds of boost by accident on a stock block. So the motor was trying to shoot for 700 plus horsepower, ain't gonna hold. That was definitely not the motor's fault. That was our fault for trying to put it, push this too hard. So going back, we are definitely going to chill out on this motor. And I want to now focus also on really getting a swap kit together for customers. So I think if anything, I've definitely proved I can put a Honda into a Porsche. There's no doubt about that. I think that's pretty well established. So I'm going to focus on that a little more and show you guys what I'm thinking now. So here's the engine mount. And now that I have it all out, it's a great time to do this. So I actually bought some steel, which is up in the corner. I'm going to make a jig for this engine mount. So that way I have something I can sell and people can purchase if they want to put uh, a motor in their car. Also, I have our cover, our inspection cover for the inside so you can access the top of the motor. Now, with that being said, this motor still sits quite high and is very tight with my motor mount and everything that I did. So I think I'm going to modify uh, 
the cross member actually to allow the motor to sit even lower. So I will build a tubular uh, cross member, most likely out of chromoly, that will give this a lower profile and allow us to drop the whole motor in the engine bay really as much as we want. I would love to drop it like three quarters of an inch more than it is. And that would give us the ability to um, pretty much not have to run this raised cover. Now this is raised because it just clears coils and stuff like that that I have on there. But if I could run a flat panel, A, it will be much easier to build and sell. And B, it will allow you to run, it's sitting right here, but the stock uh, sound deadening and all that stuff on the back. So right now that bumped area, I would have to make like this tiered panel and stuff. And for uh, practical purposes, as far as sell, you know, resale, people aren't gonna wanna have to do all that and redo their interior. Most people are just gonna wanna keep the stock interior um, and the stock sound deadening everything. So uh, making this just a more or less flush panel will definitely be a better option for people. So enough chatting about it. Let's start making a jig for this engine mount. Okay, working on our bracket here. And like I was saying before, we do wanna lower this whole thing. So what I'm going to do is, or what I did rather, was I got some carriage bolts that fit very snugly in here. So these are gonna be mounted here and we'll weld these to our jig. And then I made half inch spacers here. I was thinking to go a little more than half inch, but I think half inch is a reasonable gap. Uh, that's really all this motor needs to get clearance. Um, you know, it obviously clears now, but to just have a little half inch lower would really be beneficial. forgive the mess here but we got a box that has our oil pan baffle in it and we're gonna open it up so let me grab an oil pan and I'm hoping that this is gonna be a good solution for our car all right let's check this sucker out so it's got a stainless top our steel uh, pieces here now this is a welded unit um, it looks pretty nice. It's got seven trap doors. Uh, one thing I'm kind of questioning is, see how these doors have these little bends on them? It seems to me like they're bent the wrong way, to be honest with you. I would think they'd be bent this way because the whole idea of them is to keep the door slightly, uh, slightly not open, but, you know, just have the only contact points being these bent up edges. That way the doors can't stick shut with the oil um, acting as like, you know, the oil film would keep them stick shut. But this is a pretty reputable company. I'm gonna go ahead and say they know what they're doing and uh, that this is gonna work fine. And here's our oil pan. It's a brand new oil pan that we got. Let's throw the sucker in here. That looks like it fits pretty darn good. So we got a nice tight seal on the bottom here. Um, and essentially, so this is the front of the motor. This is the rear, you know, how it's oriented in my car. So the idea is that oil is going to hit these trap doors under hard acceleration and keep all the oil in the sump instead of running up the timing chain cover. I might do an additional baffle here just to make triple sure that that's not the problem. All the track guys who run this in a front wheel drive application have uh, that issue when uh, hard cornering on the track, oil running up here that if it's non-baffled and aerating the oil coming in because it's uh, you know creating a dry spot. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, we don't, the side to side, it's not really gonna affect us much. There's a baffle right here. Uh, nothing on this side because it's so close to the pump, doesn't really need it. But I think it's gonna work. So this is a weld-in unit. So uh, essentially we just pull this bottom piece, we unbolt it from the top piece, weld it in, 
and then uh, re-bolt in the top piece and that gives us ability to, if we ever had to clean the pan or anything like that, we can take this piece out and it allows for easy access. But that's kind of gonna be my, uh, my oil pan baffle there. It looks pretty good. Here's the jig all buttoned up. So you can see I just took some scrap metal and located our engine mounts that go to the, this one goes to the block here. This one goes through the valve cover or through the timing chain cover into the head and block. And we have it located on the stock uh, Porsche motor mounts. Now, as you can see, I, I uh, disregarded the carriage bolts and I used a through bolt now. So now this, uh, I just have a welded bolt or nut rather on the bottom and it threads down into that. And you can see I have my spacer here. So now I have half an inch of adjustability up and down to uh, really dial in where I want the motor located on this next go around. So with all that being said, um, all I have to do now is make a new inspection cover, get that oil pan baffle welded in, and we're gonna be in pretty good shape here. So as far as my initial uh, plans to, for the swap kit, I plan on releasing the engine mount, the baffled oil pan ready to go, and also the um, uh, inspection cover for inside of the car. So if you choose to want that as an option, which I can't imagine anybody wouldn't wanna do that, um, then we'll have that available for you. So I just gotta figure out pricing. I gotta get this dialed in, make sure everything fits in my car. Uh, the only thing that's not gonna work on my car, I don't think, is I think I'm gonna have to readjust my exhaust because my trunk mount exhaust mounts to the engine. And if the engine's a half an inch lower, I might have an issue with that, but that's not a big deal. I just have to, you know, weld in an, a little bit of an angle or something like that. So I'm not worried about that really as much, but that's um, that's something that I have to deal with. So, so I'm gonna end this video off right about here uh, because I have, you know, a lot of work to do. I've had a ton of customers um, order BMW swap parts and stuff like that the past couple of weeks. So I'm super slammed with all that, but my focus is getting this motor back in this car uh, in my free time. So pretty much during the day I'm working, at night I have one, two hours to throw at the uh, at the 911 here and get this thing back in action. But I really appreciate you guys watching and yeah, stay tuned for the next one. Um, I did wanna share with you that I was able to become a Pulsar Turbo Systems dealer. So I ordered my first turbo that's going to go onto this motor here. And as you can see, we're getting it pretty close to being put back in the car. And we're gonna uh, have the initial start with that turbo on this car. So we're not gonna use that Borg Warner that was on here. Um, and we will uh, probably save that for the built motor or just try to sell it and maybe try to recoup some money. So uh, yeah, as of today, I'm a Pulsar Turbo Systems dealer. Um, we'll go over that in the next video uh, in detail and I'll let you know what that um, entails. But man, until then, I appreciate y'all watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next one.